Hello again. Today I'll continue the quest, you know, for fixing this power supply for a professional keyboard Roland EM2000. So I got the new parts here. This is the Burn Circuit KM1M080BTU, blah, blah, blah. I have two new capacitors, two electrolytic capacitors to replace the old ones. And before doing anything else, I'm going to take each of these little electrolytics around here for checking and eventually replacing them with better parts. Here I have an ESR table, I mean equivalent serial resistor. So uh, we'll check if the capacitors are, uh, you know, included or uh, the results are included in uh, this chart because this is more than 20 years old power supply and it needs a really uh, clever uh, verification of the electrolytic, electrolytic capacitors you know this is the biggest problem ever okay let's start with this little guy here like always ts100 ready for duty reporting <laughs> ready uh, some wire soldering so far i don't see anything strange or unusual with these guys but it's better to check them okay so it's good to have a marker nearby to write the orientation of the capacitor polarity minus plus don't uh, rely on your memory your photographic memory <laughs> it did happen to me so many times to get wrong about Okay, so this guy here, this is a Elna 50 volts 4.7 micro. So if we look at the chart, we should have at 50 volts at least 20 ohm, 1.9 ohms. It's absolutely perfect. So this guy goes back into the board. Very nice. Now this guy here, minus here, this is a 100 microfarads of 50 volts 100 of 50, uh, 50 volts we should have around 0 93 ohms let's see 0 69 but the capacity it's almost half 65 microfarads okay the answer it's okay but the capacity it's very low well i think i'm gonna use this guy 330 on 50 volts it's better to have a higher than a small one and they add, this one is very possible to be damaged I mean the 100 one because it's near it's very close to the active element to the chip here and uh, I'm pretty sure it was exposed to temperature okay let's go with these guys around here which I doubt they are in trouble minus goes the other way okay here it's marked we have plus and minus shouldn't be a problem yes plus plus and this one take them out these capacitors are from elna it's a really good 220 to 20 at 25 volts and all of them 220 okay let's do the measurements 163 way under 193 188 all of them are under so this is 220 at 25 volts okay let me see if i can find these are at the output so i don't see any problem if we have different uh, values higher is better perfect this goes in place already plus it's up here very short legs now it's okay yeah we catch that perfect so we got one in place 400 and 70 these guys are just going out from the scheme uh, let me try another one i'm not cleaning the flux because i want to see exactly where i've been and what i have done okay so these guys are okay now i still have one two three let's check these ones the secret is a lot of soldering and that can keep the temperature until leg is released i bet this is good yes absolutely back in place 
Oh, so they are in parallel here. All right. Let's have the big capacitors 100 micro at 450 volts. Okay. 053. Yeah, pretty close, but cool. Good to go. Now, let me have this circuit back in place. So that should be the single problem I see here is this capacitor, which is not okay it's too close so we have to find something else so i believe i'll use this one 47 microfarads at 63 volts i rather have half of capacity but good instead of having problems there let me check it out 44 with 06 Okay, so this is a 47. Oh, yeah, it's perfect. This is perfect. All right. So, plus going down here and minus there. Okay. Yeah, it will work with that for sure. I need the shield back in place because this one is not only a heat sink, but it's also a physical connection here between circuits there we go no short here we'll clean that later any shorts here no everything looks fine any shorts here no any shorts here no the outputs there's the capacitors okay this is looking good well people i think it's time to check if uh, we did a good job of course we can't just apply that to a power supply because i'm not sure about the reaction well i should be sure about the things i'm doing but uh, it's better to be careful so that's why i have this connector here and we'll do a little trick <laughs> and you laugh about but this is a really safe way to do the things. I'll connect a bulb in series with the mains. That's a very simple connection. So I got one here. Always do this trick before anything else. This is very important for safety. Okay, so this one goes in here to one of the poles of the bulb or the contact, better said. The other one goes in here to the board. Now we need a piece of wire between the other guy here and the power supply. Perfect. We can even check the connection now. Continuity mode. This is good. Okay. Let's see about the bulb. How much ohms do we got there? 95 ohms. Now people. <laughs> This is the moment of true. The multimeter is ready to go. And nothing else but let's plug it in. Power off. Everything is clear. And what do you think? Power on. Google's. Let's go. All the connections are okay here. Cross your fingers and go. Well, I believe we are good to go. Be real careful. This is high voltage here. This is not a joke. I'm not kidding. So let's see numbers. First of all, we should have 230 volts here. And we have. Then let's go to these big capacitors and check for the voltage. Yes, and we have 282 volts. Okay, we are good to go here. And this is the output. We should have, obviously, 12 volts. Look over here. So even if I turn off the power, we still have a lot, a lot of output. 260 volts still in the capacitors. So don't mess with these guys. Don't mess. We are okay here. We should be... We got power there, and that's the other side. There's the high voltage, the low voltage. High voltage area, we don't want to touch that, obviously. 
I got no power here, nothing, zero three volts. What about the big ones are still 276 volts. Can you imagine what that means? Oh my, let me isolate this area, the high voltage area with some tape. You know, even I'm convinced there is no more power. I'm still anxious to touch those. Let's check this diode and just don't want to take it out because it's hard to put it back. I will just cut one of these legs and do the measurement. This is good. Yeah, no problem with the diode. Just a piece of soldier and we are good. We should see the bulb flashing just a bit. Yeah, I can see there a slight, a slight um, pulse. We should have kind of, uh, okay, that's the ground. That's interesting. We have something in the beginning, then the things are getting relaxed. What about these guys here? We should have um, after the diode a voltage and there is nothing and nothing. Well, we can try something else and that's the end of the of the things. Let's try to connect this straight to the mains. Okay, ready? Power on. That's good. Nothing happened. This is perfect. I can check if I have a power consumption here. Okay, that's my office here. It's turned off, obviously on and we have a 5 watts 10 watts yeah we have a power consumption on 10 watts on standby 13 yeah so I may say that it's not exactly that and now we can check the the voltages here we got nothing here here nothing it's very possible to have a command to one of these pins going from the keyboard you know to start up the power supply so far high stage of the power supply it's fixed we got no more short there we have a 14 watts of standby consumption the fuse it's intact the single problem here or not problem maybe that's the way it have to to work I have this circuit going a little bit hot 37 it was like 42 degrees the chopper i mean the transformer it's hot also okay so i got no voltages on the secondary let's call it and i also i can't check if i have any kind of oscillation if i have any kind of fragrances here i don't have an oscilloscope usually i have two now i got none <laughs> so i'm thinking to something else you know this kind of uh, power supplies cmps uh, they are having a lot of radio frequencies and harmonics and stuff like this so they are noisy so i'm thinking about if i'm turning on this guy and I receive some crazy noises here. That could be a, a clue if I have an oscillation or not. All right, so let's grab a frequency. Doesn't matter. Maybe I should go lower. Medium ways, 700 kilohertz something. Okay, let's see. What do you think? Yeah. I can say for sure something happening there. Around 594. You see?
Well, that can be a clue that the power supply is working, but we should have a command or something to one of these pins. Maybe one of the voltages going to ground. I really don't know. I don't want to get into details no more because uh, so far I can say that it's working. I mean, from my point of view, it should work. I think this is an interesting trick, isn't that? <laughs> well, I just let it like that for now. I'll be back when I'm gonna have the right tools. I mean, the oscilloscope to check for the frequencies and all the other stuffs. Don't forget when you are working with these guys have always uh, the first plug, you know, a bulb in series or a resistor of any kind. The bulb is better because it's taking all the, in case of a shot, it starts lighting. I'll uh, make a separate video about that, how to improvise one of these uh, active fuses, <laughs> let's call it. And uh, of course, if you like uh, the video, subscribe, uh, push like, I'm waiting your comments. Uh, if you have any idea about this, just let me know. And I'll be back with some others uh, in the meantime. Don't forget, have fun. Bye-bye.